which is Sanjaya Varnitaye Namaha. Mahabharata is a story about one person and his family, and that is Vyasa. Vyasa's sons were, I don't want to kiss you, you probably may not know, may know, Dhridrashtra and Pandu. Both of them are his own sons. Dhridrashtra is the Jeshta Putra, and after that is Pandu. <coughs> To them were born the children and Dhridrashtra Putraha, they are known as Kauravaha. And Pandu's sons are known as Pandavaha. <coughs> the Mahabharata war is between two sets of his own grandchildren. Whom does he support? He cannot support anybody. But what led to the war <coughs> is the whole story. Mahabharata is considered to be the biggest literature ever written. 100,000 verses. Can you even think about it? Somebody writing 1 lakh verses. Where does he have the time to do anything else? <laughs> and that is not the only thing he wrote. 18 Puranas. Bhagavad Gita is part of Mahabharata. He wrote Brahma Sutra. He compiled all the Upanishads. I think in, it's humanly not possible. That's why we call it as Vyasaya Vishnu Rupaya, Vyasa Rupaya Vishnave, Namo Vai Brahma Nideye Vasishtaya Namo Namaha. Hmm? Vyasaya Vishnu Rupaya. Vyasa Rupaya Vishnave, Bhagavan himself. And the very important character in the whole of Mahabharata is Sanjaya. One may think that he is just a charioteer of Dhridrashtra. No. If you open the Mahabharata, half of the book is none other than Sanjaya talking to others. And he was a man of great knowledge. And so Bhagavad Gita also is none other than Sanjaya speaking to Dhritarashtra. Therefore, it is appropriately named as Sanjaya Varnita Yai Namaha. I have to give you some of the important points from Mahabharata to understand who Sanjaya is. In There are many Parvas in Mahabharata. Then Bhagavad Gita appears in Bhishma Parva. Bhishma is, as you know, the grand, great grand sire of the Kuru dynasty. Sana, Sashantanu's son. He did not marry. And he taken a great vow of his times because in the, those times, the king not marrying is, is not even possible, not even considered as right. Because king is the father of the, the country. Yata Raja Tata Praja. As per the king, so are the uh, citizens of that country. And so if he himself is a person who does not have any progeny, who will be then ruling? And so here, he did that because he gave a word to his father, saying that I would not marry because he, Shantanu, married the lady he liked. Apart from Ganga, whom he got married and got him as son, and Ganga left him. And uh, now that he wanted to marry the daughter of a fisherman who was fisherwoman, who is a fisherwoman. Her name was Shakti. 
she was also the mother of vyasa born out of parashar therefore vyasa is known as parashardya so she the busher fisher woman was liked by shantanu but then the father of the fisher woman said if my daughter were to be married to you her children alone should become the kings and then yes not bishma so he was known as devavrata at that time obviously shantanu was distraught came back home came back to the kingdom and then devavrata came to see his father sad went to him and said what is the reason why you are sad he said this is what happened then don't worry i will not marry that son that is not going to work you are the jeshta putra it's according to the rule you are the person to rule and you are the one to get your progeny and they will be the rulers no not necessary this i am going to change and then he went to the fisher woman's father and told him that i am not going to get married don't worry therefore you will not have any problem your own daughters children alone will become the kings i assure you that that is the vow you took therefore is known as bhishma <coughs> bhishma pratigna and obviously later on um the story goes i don't want to elaborate on the story you can watch in the serial if you want to <coughs> bhishma was a great warrior nobody can defeat him in the war so in the bhishma parva chapter 13 is where sanjay uvacha sanjayo ham maharaj is addressing dhritarashtra namaste bharadarshava hato bhishma ha shantanavo bharatanam pitamaha the bhagavad gita explains the situation where arjuna became distraught and uh, deluded or confused about fighting and the report sanjaya gives is after bhishma was defeated defeated he withdrew from the war and at that point dhritarash asked this question what happened bhishma is down once bhishma is down it's sure that kauravas can do not win that dhritarashtra knows how did bhishma withdraw from the war why and what happened before that what is the beginning of the whole thing because he was not having the eyes to see it so here yasya viryam samashritya yutam putras tava karot bhishma is the person who was a very strong pillar not only for kauravas but for all the wrong doings of duryodhan even though bhishma could have avoided the whole situation hmm. the dais game that was conducted there at the court was in front of bhishma and drona draupadi swatra abaran that is also done in front of all of them and they didn't say a word because bhishma had given the word i will protect the ruling dynasty and whatever cost it can be even though he knew that what was going is wrong he could not say anything so therefore sanjay here says to dhritarashtra directly on his face yasya viryam samashritya holding on to the power and strength of bhishma alone yutam putra hastava karot your own son went into that playing of the dice game that bhishma is down now what will you do and so he tells to dhritarashtra directly or indirectly when bhishma is down whom duryodhana was having all this support from is no more going to fight the war 
Sashete nihate rajan. He's lying down on the floor, on the rear of bed. Sankhye at the war, Bhishmaha. And who is the cause for this? Shikandina. Shikandi is the cause for this. Because nobody else could do this. And later on I will tell you what Shikandi's role here. So listening to this Dhridharashtra was obviously very, very unhappy. Here, further he in ch chapter 15 elaborates, Sanjay Ovaj, Namaskritva Pitusteham Para Sharyaya Dimate. He says, I am asked to, to report to you about all that has happened in the Mahabharata war which I could do it because I am given a special power. Doordarshan. Nowadays, you know, many of the uh, marriages you go, that fellow comes right in front of you. Right? What? And the one who operates is known as Dronacharya. <laughs> Dronacharya. <laughs> it right away comes and you wonder what is this? First, I do not understand. Many, many of the places they just come over your head and then they stand in front. <laughs> so Sanjaya was given such a power. In fact, it was given to Dhridharashtra. He said, I don't want it. Yasa gave it to him. You look at it. What you can from wherever you are in your own palace, you can sit down and watch what is happening in the War field. He said, I can't stand it. All the while I did not have my eyes even to see my own son. Why do I see the tragedy that is going to happen there? I don't want to see it. Give it to my charioteer here, here, secretly. So Sanjaya says here, Namaskritva Pituhu Te Aham. I am saluting to you, O oh Father. Father means the Raja. Parasharyaya dhimate by Parasharya, none other than Vyasa. Yasya prasadat, due to whose grace, divyam tat praptam jnanam uttamam. Again, the great vision. What is that vision? Drishishchan chat indriya rajan, tu raj shravanam evacha. Not only I can. From a distance, I can see whatever is going on, like really like that, drone only. But I can also hear what they are saying. See, if somebody is some 200 feet away, you can see them. But can you hear them? Hmm. Technology was so advanced there. <laughs> so I can see, I can also hear what they are saying, even though I'm far away. Durat from a different Shravana Mevach. I can hear Parachitasya Vijnanam Atitam Anagadasya. And also by looking at the situation, I know what happened before and what is going to happen later. This is the vision Vyasa given to me. If a situation is happening, why that is happening, I know what is the what are the situation, what are the things happened to lead to this. And by seeing this, I know what would be happening further on. Hmm. See, nowadays you have that, what do you call that? We are, we are. So nowadays they are going to come up with a move, the uh, technology where you decide what you want to see in the movie. The movie will be there. So nowadays when you see, the movie is only what they show is right there, right? The, the technology is now, you can go and see what is in the happening in the other side. If you wish to see, that will also be there. So And now they are coming with another one where the virtual office, where you can... At home itself, you can wear this VR, and the, the, your uh, your uh, colleagues are also wearing similar one. And you can go to their room. They are not there with you. 
they are in their home only but you when you come there they will see you coming in and then you can chat with them have a coffee with them coffee mean you drink coffee they drink coffee there <laughs> and then you can discuss and you will go to another room and another room another person will be there in his home he will see you coming hey where were you i was in another room so and then even conferences can be held in a large table where people are sitting there but nobody is there actually and you can talk to them and then they all can see some whatever is going anyway that tech so here it's already there not only what was happening what happened what is going to happen atitanam agadasya cha atitana means what has happened agadasya and what is going to happen then vyutyato utpatti vijnanam when did all thing originated what is the origin of the universe i can see that vyutyato utpatti vijnanam akashe cha gati shubha i can fly on the sky and see or it's what you call that you know a bird save you so and i can land anywhere i want so if the war is not in like happening in one place no war is happening in different areas uh, there is uh, maybe uh, shatrughna is uh, not shatrughna that nakula is fighting one place bhima is fighting another place <laughs> then arjuna is another place. i can go anywhere i want from this space akasha and go and land and see what is happening there vyutyato utpatti vijnanam akashe jagati shubha astre asangah yuddeshu varadana mahatmana and even as the fighting going on there will be missile attacks none of them will touch me i will not be touched by any of the missiles that are being aimed or shot at any other they will not injure me they will bypass me and go because he is given that power yasa for me to engage in the act of you know like today's journalist war journalist there are specialized people war journalists they go there daringly into the war but they will not be attacked by anybody but they will be able to report currently what is going on and scathed so therefore shrunume vistarene dam vichitra param adbhutam bharatanam abhut yuddham yata tallo maharshanam therefore listen to me i am going to elaborately talk about this entire war which is happening between the descendants of bharata vamsha and this is so wonderful to see because it can even create lo maharshanam the hair in the body can stand up that much of thrilling experience of like you know when you go to a 3d movie or what you call nowadays you know disneyland when you go you are actually sitting in one place only but it look like you are going to places and the mu- the sound and the entire maya you know the world that they create you may think that you are actually going through that experience in that way i am going to explain to you now why duryodhana is so concerned about bhishma because he told even in gita it come bhishma beva birakshantu duryodhana commands all of them and especially the dushasana his commander general saying that you better protect bhishma at any cost and why it is that duryodhana is very concerned about bhishma is because bhishma himself told him what duryodhana vacha abravit vishuddhaatma naham hanyam shikandinam shikandi i will not touch this way bhishma had told me shruyate strihya saupurvam tasmat vadyo rane mame mama aham rane vadyah because i heard that she was he was she no no it is you know the third term you probably know they would ask the kids <laughs> they <laughs> they they are they they you was she was they <laughs> so bhishma 
actually as you all know amba ambalika ambika these three of them were captured by bhishma for his uh, uh, which, for his king vichitravir to make sure that he gets a progeny and he gets married because that fellow was not capable of winning anything he was not having that strength so bhishma won for him the, the three uh, three girls and then brought them to vichitravir to get married out of them two of them got married to him third one would she would say that you got it got me from the swayambara or captured me you better marry me he said no am i i given a vow i'm not marrying anybody she curses him that i will be the cause of your death and she disappears she became shikandi and so he knows that bishma knew that it is shikandi is none other than the one whom he deprived and she if she is in front of me i will stop fighting and krishna knew that so when bhima was bishma was very powerfully destroying the pandava army krishna said okay now is the time bishma has to be stopped he cannot be stopped by anybody only person who can stop is shikandi brought her in front of him because he said he said here tasmat vadyo yah yo ranayam ranayam so i will not i will be killed i will be really killed only by her therefore duryodhana made sure that she, he is completely protected from shikandi so here he said tasmat bhishmo rakshitavya visheshena idi me mati in specially you must make sure that bhishma is protected completely by all of you shikandino vade yatma yattaha sarve tishtantu mamakaha may all of you one pointedly make sure that shikandi comes nowhere near bhishma and because that is the only way he would be ending his participation in this war i don't want to go to elaborately on that krishna made sure that shikandi comes right in front of him and thereby bhishma stops and shikandi aims at him and he was attacked so that is the reason why and when drudrasha asked what happened bhishma is not there in the war so this is what happened this is how the narration of sanjaya now Dhritarashtra, even though he is so fond of uh, his own sons, he knew that they were wrong. But he couldn't do anything. After all, you know, my my son, even if it is wrong, it is after all my son. <laughs> you know that pitru uh, agra, you know, meaning the so much attachment towards one's own son clouded his understanding, and he was not able to see the wrong that is done by Duryodhana. but sanjay as i said he is the constant communicator of uh, information from person to person not only that like vidura sanjay was also a man of great wisdom and once dhridrashtra was told by which sanjay that what actually makes a person to win the war i am trying to show why sanjay is important because the name is sanjay varnita so i am focusing on sanjay it is said some time back that when there was a war between the devatas and danavas in the heavens tatte karanam rajan pravaksha manasu yave naradastam rushirdeta bhishma drono cha pandava yena me vartam ashritya yutte deva sure bravi pitamah kilapura mahendra tendivo gasah and i will tell you once uh, the pitamaha bhishma i mean the pitamaha meaning the brahma he had told the devatas and in the danavas that what actually makes a person really win a war so today's context it is applicable to all of us 
if you really succeed want to succeed in anything there should not be any shortcut used i always tell people shortcut is short lived any way you get a shortcut to win anything it will be very short lived so here also he tatte karanam rajan pravakshyami i will tell you this very clearly naradah tam rishir vedah bhishma dronocha pandava evam artham ashritya yudde devasure abravit so all these people know who narada rishis deve drishir veda bhishma drona all of them what is that the command or the information that is passed on by brahma to all the devatas mahendra include natata balavirabhyam jayanti vijagishavah yada satyan rusham sabhyam dharmena dharmena eva udyamena cha we always believe that mighty mighty people win i think it's quite warm here can open, open might alone is right in today's world that's what we see people are using their military power hmm, and uh, other you know powers politics to really get their way done it may work it is working for some time unfortunately in kali it works but what is given by an advice by pitamaha brahma to even indra is na tata bala virya abhyam vijiki shavah jayanti bala and virya bala strength virya is mightiness or prowess by this alone a person should not win anything yata satya anusha anush anshusabhyam anshusamsabhyam dharmena eva udyamena cha what is most important here is satya an anrusham sasa anrusham sata means benevolence what is benefit to the maximum number of people that should be thought of all the time and what is satya what is that which is true at all times so that's why in our pledge also very clearly gurudev has given to us for us to remember us always uh, we are ever ready to fight against what we, uh, we are ever ready to fight against all the people around no <laughs> ever ready to fight against all low tendencies and false values within and we thought we serve as an army courageous and disciplined ever ready to fight against what so our own low tendencies and false values that is a true win so satya anrusham sabhyam dharmena eva udyamena udyamena means is self effort industriousness enterprising attitude that alone really win and not just mere physical strength and strategies tektva dharmam cha lobham cha moham cha udyama sthitah those people who have given up adharma loba and moha adharma the unrighteous ways loba is greediness moha is delusion giving up all these things yudyatvam ahanka anahankaraha me one fight without the ego of i and mine mm-hmm. this alone will really win the war yato dharmas tato jaya this is a tag line for bahabharat yato dharma tato jaya where there is dharma there there is victory in fact there is a side story where yudhishthira was overwhelmed by seeing the array of army of kauravas he was quite concerned because their army is not as big as the kaurava army so therefore he slowly goes to bhishma 
just before the war or just at the start of the war and he asked him i want your blessings you are after all my great grandfather i want your blessings so at that point hello bishma cannot say that you will win because then duryodhana was already you know listening to this so duryodhana uh, is uh, pretty much depending upon bishma and he cannot say you will win the war he cannot say that at the same time he has asked for blessings what do i do he says dharma jayati and you know yudhishthira is dharma putra so in directly what did he say he said you will win but not that's not directly dharma jay yato dharma tadav jay so here also sanjay quotes this yato dharma stato jay wherever there is dharma there there is win real everlasting victory why it is so why dharma is the winner here you know why wild guess because dharma follows krishna <laughs> krishna is not following dharma wherever krishna is there dharma is so that's why he goes gunabhuto jaya krishne prishta de bhedi madavam it is krishna's guna is dharma gunabhuto jaya krishna jana sorry the very nature of krishna is victory and victory wherever it is it is following behind that is dharma meaning it's like a shadow gunabhuto jaya krishne prishta do abhedi madavam तथा विजय सन्नतिपरो गुण दर् थ्री क्वालिटी ऑफ अ मैन ऑफ नॉलेज ईज मैन ऑफ धर्म ईज अ पर्सन ऑफ ह्यूमिलिटी एंड वेर एवर ही इज देर ईज विक्ट्री एंड दट ईज एम्बॉडीड बै कृष्ण ए पर्सन बिकॉज यू थिंक अबउट इट ही द वेरी lord of the universe decided to be a charioteer of a person hmm. think about that you know interesting thing is once sri ramana maharshi uh, was uh, this is a story i do not know how far it is true but it is been narrated by many people he um once he was in his ashram of course he never traveled anywhere outside as you know somebody asked this question what is the characteristic of a person of knowledge he says if you want to know the characteristic of knowledge true knowledge wisdom go out outside and see now go outside and see so the person who asked and few others also they went outside and there was a person one one young sadhu who was putting all the slippers of the people who you know usually people come it often happens especially indian in festival everybody slipper on the own slipper that said on everywhere so cash everywhere so one person was neatly organizing so then they looked at him and then they, they, they never connected this dots you know so they came back so ramana maharshi asked so what did you see outside no nothing well, one person was arranging all these slippers that is swami shivananda at that time he was young sadhu traveling a sadhu a knowledgeable person is a character is by humility so he would down to earth hum- hum- humbleness you can see in that so krishna he says yat yada vijayascha asya sannadischa aparogana another guna of a man of knowledge is sannati meaning humility so krishna has jaya dharma and humility therefore 
ಅನಂದ ತೇಜ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಶತ್ರು ಭೂಗೇಶ್ ನಿರ್ವ್ಯತ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಿಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಆಲ್ ಎನಿಮೀಸ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇಸ್ ದ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ರಿಮೇನಿಂಗ್ ಎವರ್ ಅನ್ಅಜಿಟೇಟೆಡ್ ಪುರುಷ ಸನಾತನಮಯೋ ಯತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸ್ತೋ ಜಯ ಇಂಡೀಡ್ ಹೀ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸನಾತನ ಪುರುಷ ವೇರ್ ಅವರ್ ಹೀಸ್ ದೇರ್ ದಿ ವಿನ್ ಈಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಶ್ಯೋರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಸಿ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ವಿತ್ ಪಾಂಡವ so therefore the rashtra even though you have all the mightiness all the power of the army bhishma himself is with you where krishna is there you cannot stop the pandavas winning so sanjaya had this given lot of advice to uh, as i said to many people especially the dhritarashtra and dhritarashtra obviously would have taken krishna for granted so sanjay says do not ever think that you know krishna he cannot be known that easily mohate to na jananti nara narayano rishi tava putra duratmanah sarve manyu vashanuga prapta kalam idam vakyam kala pashena kunditah dvaipayano naratascha kandvo ramastadanagah ಯುವರ್ ಓನ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಕೌರ್ವಾಸ್ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ನೋ ಒನ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ನರ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಋಷೋ ಈಸ್ ನನ್ ಅದರ್ ದೆನ್ ನರ and narayana rishi they are not just like normal human beings that these people don't your duryodhana does not know that tatra tava putra duratmanah sarve manyu vashagada anuga he the one who is always having his mind in anger has not clearly seen the one whom he is fighting is the eternal rishis nara narayan they are standing in front of him that he doesn't see in fact prapta kalam idam vakyam kala pashena kunditaha these people who have your kauravas your own sons have not understood because their time has come to end even though dvaipayana narada kanva parshurama all of them told him to avoid this he rejected all of them avarayan tavasudam your own son so tad grihitavan not he does not understand did not understand that therefore yatra dharmo dutikanti hi yatra shri shri tata madhi hi yato dharmastato krishna yata krishno tatas jaya here ever there is dharma there is driti hi duti hi brilliance kanti hi brightness shri hi prosperity shri hi richness matihi knowledge dharma righteousness yata dharma tato krishna yata krishna tato jaya so with all this clear understanding still uh, your sons have done mistake so therefore by you now crying about it it is not going to change and that's what happened that's why bhishma is down once bhishma is down nobody can match the prowess of dharma i mean bhishma and if he is down pandavas have the all the benefit of winning the war so um uh, next one is the name mahabharata sthitaye namaha that also i will cover because i cover two names in one satsang <coughs> so mahabharata madhyasthitaye namaha bhagavad gita is that which is given right in the middle of the war so unlike upanishads which are given in a very solitude where the student is a, a vairagya purusha and the mahatma the one who is teaching the knowledge is a person of meditation sitting in a quietude of a forest in all solitude where nobody is disturbing and the student approaches the teacher and asks for very subtle answers for questions and the 
Rishi would give him the knowledge. Here it is not that. One who is hearing is a Kshatriya. One who is giving the knowledge is also a Kshatriya. War is the place. Chaos everywhere. A great danger is looming large. Everybody is ready to fight. It is a Rana Bhumi, not Aranya Bhumi. The difference between Aranya Rana. Rana means war. Aranya means no war. Hmm. So, where a forest is not a place of any violence, whereas they are in a place where the great mass killing is about to start. At that point, what, what knowledge was given to him? Mahabharata sthitaye namaha. Madhya sthitaye namaha. And what is this Madhya means? Madhya means where Arjuna is asking uh, Krishna, I want to see both sides of the... You might have seen this. This is coming in the first chapter itself. Adavjavastitan drishtvada dharashtan kabidvajaha pravridde shastra sampade danurudhyamya pandavaha rishikesham tadavakyam idamaha mahipate Arjunovach, Sena Yorubayor Madhya Radam Stapaya Mechuda Yavade Ba Yavade Dani Rikshekam Yodukama Navastitan. Oh Krishna, I would like to see everybody is ready to fight. I would like to see whom are you going to, whom am I going to fight the war. So therefore, take my chariot right in the middle of the war field. And there I want to see who are the people. How much strength they have, how much strength we have, all that. Bhagavan Krishna also said, okay, that's what you want to do. We'll do it. And he put the uh, chariot right in front of the people whom he worships the most, Bhishma and Drona. So, Bhishma Drona Pramukataha Sarvesham Chamahikshitam Vacha Partha Pashetan Samavedan Puruniti. Whom are you going to fight? You look at them. Your own teacher, your own grandfather. So the purpose for which uh, by, for which Krishna did this is to make sure that Arjuna is not having the thought of revenge to fight the war. Because this is the war of dharma, not personal enmity. If the personal enmity is the purpose of the war, then he, Arjuna would not even think twice to kill Krishna, kill Karna or kill the Duryodhana, etc. But then that is not what is going to be achieved or what Krishna wants to achieve. Because he is very purpose of the avatar is what? Dharma, Samstapana, Arthaya. Right? We all know that. Dharma, Samstapana, Arthaya, Sambhavami, Yuge, Yuge. I want to establish Dharma. How do you establish Dharma? But making sure that whomever he is helping is fighting the war for Dharma. And Arjuna had come to the battlefield to fight for getting back the kingdom as well as express his revenge or anger towards those who have done wrong to him. <coughs> him as well as his brothers. Who are those? Duryodhana, Karna, all of those people. But Krishna says, this is not a war of revenge. This is the war of Dharma. Therefore, you are going to fight against your own dear ones who are standing for a Dharma. You may be liking them, but you cannot but fight with them. <clears throat> See, this is to say to all of us indirectly, even though we have pet ideas, pet desires, pet vasanas, etc., when it comes to study of Gita, we have to fight against them. We have to fight against our own habits. We have to fight against our own prejudices, beliefs, desires, likes, dislikes, preconceived notions, ideas, opinions, perceptions, our own pet thoughts or pet uh, uh, preferences, vasanas. Are we ready? If you are not ready, Gita has not much to convey to us. <clears throat> so here, seeing his own people, 
तत्र पश्यस्थितान पार्थ पितृन च पिता महान आचार्यान मातुलान भ्रातृन पुत्रान पौत्रान सखी स्तथा ही सा हिस ओन टीचर द्रोण हिस ओन फार ग्रैंड फादर हिस ओन अंकल हिस ओन ब्रदर्स हिस ओन कजि हिस ओन रिलेटिव बंधुन पुत्रान पौत्रान both sides because they are war is not going to spare anybody shashuran suhrda staiva sena yorubayorati both sides he sees that tan samiksha sakaunteya sarvan bandhu navastitan he sees his own relatives both sides who are going to be killed for that in that war kripaya paraya vishta vishta para paraya vishta vishidan idam abravid that is where the beginning of geeta is that he says i do not want to fight mm. so what happened here is madhya mahabharata madhyasthita enam another meaning of that is madhyasthita means what sitting in the middle the, uh, the a referee or a what you call umpire where should he be especially in tennis game right at the net right mm-hmm. okay he cannot take sides yes look at both of them making sure that both of them are following the rules right if anybody does not follow the rule immediately he will report a red flag or whatever card he will show there is a foul gear what is that card those who play tennis know it mm-hmm. only golfer Red tag. Huh? Red tag. Red tag. Red tag. Red tag. Red tag. Soccer. 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 What do they show in the it's tennis? A, I don't know. Out. Why they are out? Why they are out? Did they show anything? No. 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 So that is to say that the madhyastha, a person who is in the middle, cannot take sides. Not only that, he has to make. She must be aware of all the rules. See any game you watch, if you don't know the rules, you cannot enjoy. Correct or not? That's why I don't go to any game because <laughs> I don't know the rules. <laughs> Somebody take me to any game unless they tell me the rules. I will like enjoy the game. <laughs> so Maha, this Bhagavad Gita is where it is considered as the mother, even though she is mother, she is giving us the understanding that. where there is a rule there is a game in the same way where there is a discipline there is a real spiritual growth if the discipline is not followed there cannot be any growth at all so madhyasthitaye means one who is bringing the discipline of the right thinking after all you know if you see entire bhagavad gita at the end of it bhagwan says do whatever you want i have told you whatever you need to do but if you follow that's good which is to say that giving the benefit of doubt to the benefit of maturity you are mature enough and you will know what to do having i having that you heard me i leave it to you to decide no you know no commandments so to say thou shalt not kill thou shalt not no thou shalt kill <laughs> you'll say that you should kill but for what purpose you have to fight the war see it is interesting many people have the misunderstanding that geeta is about violence geeta is about killing geeta about fighting it is not it is about doing the right thing ah uh, see for example some people ask me this question swami ji i want to uh uh practice non violence should i mu- kill the mosquitoes what do you do especially here it's okay but if you go to india ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, or cockroaches or lizards come come all of you come here <laughs> let us eat together <laughs> so it is necessary we should understand the context you cannot apply that i would want to be non violent therefore i will not even kill the mosquito there are people who do that also it's not that you want to kill them 
it is because it is a, a disturbances disturbance to whatever you are doing in the same way when dharma has to be established those who are acting against it must be punished and that is a rule of the game as i said without the rule there is no game so when we understand that like for example in your own body a particular part of your body is cancerous what do you do after all my body you know <coughs> let it be there will you do that yes because removing that will make you come back to health or in your own garden there are weeds there are other plants are getting affected by the weeds will you allow them? okay let them be also there now it doesn't matter then it's not garden it's a forest then <laughs> wild growth so the discipline of removing the unwanted is a part of the entire process to make it make the right thing to grow in the same way for the right thing to do there would be elimination of the wrong this arjuna did not realize the the vision is not there purpose is not clear hmm. you know once uh, recently i was away last week i was in toronto one person asked me this question so i mean these youngsters here are confused about canadian culture and hinduism because they are in canada and it is not necessarily you know the way hindus live so there is a confusion about what to follow so therefore what is your idea i said tell me first of all what is you call it as Can canadian culture ah uh, canadian culture is it applies here also american culture so to say as i say swami ji friday party and then drinking and then smoking and then uh, you know this they said that is not culture that is vulture <laughs> <laughs> the very word culture means samskriti in sanskrit samskriti means refinement a culture is a process of refinement gurudev made it a point clear a culture is none other than a set of values practiced by the group of people in a particular geographical area so when you say canadian culture what it means is the values held by the people for the benefit of the society all of them practicing or trying to practice making sure that it is integrating people that is what is culture not what they drink and which smoking what they smoke and which party they go that is not culture even hindu culture there is a problem they say oh wearing a bangle and putting a channa that is hindu culture wrong this is only a external form of you know your identification garba no go and dance that is culture are wo culture nahi hai wo celebration hai utsav hai culture means what values you have what is that which you follow over wherever you are inside the house outside the house this is one thing second is i told her any religion must give you your charama lakshyam meaning what is the ultimate goal of your life that has to be pointed out every religion has to point out that so hinduism especially points out moksha eva parama purushartah this is called charama lakshyam that is a final goal once the final goal is set then whatever you do must be in line with that that is what is called hinduism now tell me whichever geographical location you live whatever culture you follow your lakshya pointed out by your religion going not going to change so therefore there is no obvious clash between these two so culture is depending upon what values you hold etc and lakshyam is what religion points out as your final goal so therefore if your final goal is clear it doesn't matter where you live in what geographical location you live which language you speak which profession you hold uh, that 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 has nothing to do with that so where is a clash the misunderstanding of that is a problem 
So coming back to the point, so Mahabharata Madhyastitai means it is one which is holding the righteousness as the way to engage in the war. No matter who it is, whether my own uh, set of people who are in the Pandava side doing the wrong thing to be punished, at the same time, Kaurava side also if somebody is wrong to be punished. So where Arjuna got confused is about my own people. Uh, Bhishma, Drona, and even if they are wrong, in fact, he would say, I am ready to forgive them and I go out of the war. Krishna says, Muda, don't understand purpose. Why are you here? You are representing a whole dynasty. You are representing the whole, you know, the very tradition. You are a Kshatriya and you are only duty is to establish and make sure that dharma wins. I, you are my instrument. So therefore, Bhavasavya Sachin, you are my instrument. Therefore, you become my very means to establish this. So these are the two names which I wanted to explain here. Tomorrow we'll see Bhagavat Namaha and Kurukshetra Upadishtaye Namaha, these two. All right. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Makaschitu Kabatave, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, Hari Om Sri Guru Yodamana, Hari Om.